For centuries, Christians have been known as men and women of prayer, people who lift up their cares and concerns to the Father in heaven. Why is that? Why do we pray? We pray because it aligns the mind of the Christian with the will of Christ. We pray because Jesus commanded us to pray at all times, in all places. We pray because the God who knows all and sees all, hears all. We pray because it is the blessed link between human weakness and divine omnipotence. We pray not because it is some religious rule, but because the Lord is God. We pray because it is the most simple and practical way to say, I am not God. We pray, not because it is a burden to us, but because it liberates us from all other burdens. We pray, because it is exactly what the devil does not want us to do. We pray, because God can do more in five seconds than we can do in five years. We pray because it is the one thing that supersedes everything else on our to-do list today. We pray because we are too busy not to pray. We pray because somewhere, sometime, someone prayed for us. And we pray because the greatest tragedy of the Christian life is not unanswered prayer, but unoffered prayer. Prayer is powerful. That's why we pray. Well, I'm so excited to be kicking off our series on prayer and fasting. Let me just say it's been a wonderful journey, a wonderful time serving as your staff evangelist. I'm just reminded uh, this is our, we just completed five years, now starting six years. And uh, you say, how did that all kind of kind of happen? Well, we were in Valesburg Assembly of God, now our campus church, and we went serving under Pastor John and Miriam uh, for, for about 10 years or so. And Pastor John then came here, was led by the Lord here. And then we just said, Lord, we'll, we'll continue on. We became the lead pastors there. And, and Pastor John, being a man of prayer and a man of the spirit, uh, just kind of just put something into the atmosphere. And he was able to discern something that God was doing in my wife and I's heart. And we knew it in the spirit, but it didn't have language. And an opportunity came for us to serve here at, at Marlton Assembly of God. And let me just show you this past year of 2022, God did some amazing things. And I believe he's not done yet. But just a couple stats. Miles traveled. We traveled 41,000 uh, miles, babe. We did uh, 441 to be exact. People reach with the gospel. We reached 30,000 people in the U.S., 40,000 overseas to the glory of God. That's awesome. Praise God. <laughs> Profession of Christ. People who profess Christ as Savior, 5,000 in the U.S., 25,000 overseas. Amazing, amazing. And we believe that the Lord is not done yet. Our calendar is already fully booked for 2023 into 2024, and we're just saying, God, do it again. But I thank God for Pastor John and Miss Miriam and their leadership for our church, and God is up to something wonderful and powerful. You know, as we're going to be getting into these next three weeks, I thought it'd be good for us to focus on why are we doing what we're doing? Some spiritual disciplines for a successful spiritual journey. And over the next three weeks as a church, we're going to be doing a series entitled Prayer and Fasting. Uh, during this time, you're going to be hearing language like the Daniel Fast. And maybe you've never done the Daniel Fast before, don't really know what it is. Well, you came on a wonderful week because we're going to be talking about it, not just talking about it, demonstrating it. But I love the Daniel Fast. Um, how do you know that the kitchen changes during the Daniel Fast? I mean, we eat everything we don't like. That's pretty much the Daniel Fast. But I, I kind of saw this and I thought, man, we're going to adopt this for our home. But my wife may adopt it even after the 21 days. Here's why. Here's our menu this week. Monday, kitchen closed. Tuesday, no service. Wednesday, she's having a half a day. Thursday, we're going out shopping. Friday will be her day off. Honey, it's your day off on Friday. I just declared that 
right now. Saturday, we're going to eat out. And Sunday, it's the Lord's Day. We're going to have a day of rest. How many like that kind of schedule? I mean, things change during the first 21 days of praying and fasting. But everybody prays and fasts in our home, including our dogs. They don't even know what's coming, but they're going to be doing a Daniel fast too. They're going to lose a lot of weight the whole bit. But this past year, we thought it would be good because our house was so boring. We ended up getting some chickens. Yeah, the chickens, they're fasting too. Not too long ago, many of you asked, Pastor Mel, are you, are you getting some eggs? Because remember, I came up, I was complaining like, Lord, did we do something wrong? What's up? The eggs, they're not coming. You gave me some wonderful tips. Some of the tips were terrible. But I said, Lord, what are you trying to teach me in the season? He told me to wait on the Lord. Well, I got some good news, friends. My chickens are laying big time. Can we show that picture for proof? They're laying. Come on. Thank the Lord. If they were your chickens, you'll be thanking the Lord, but I'm going to thank them for you. For some of us, maybe you've never prayed and fast or started a spiritual journey through what the Bible calls fasting. Pastor John went over this. There are three types of fast, three types of fast that you'll oftentimes hear. There's the absolute fast of no food, no water. There's the normal fast, abstaining from all kinds of food. Then there's the partial fast, which you and I are going to be doing for 21 days. The Daniel fast, abstaining from meat, sweets, and bread. And let me just tell you this. During these next 21 days... Don't focus on what you have to give up. Focus on the Lord and what's coming into your life because of your obedience. What, come on somebody, what you give up will never compare to what's coming. God has amazing things he has in store for us. Fasting is abstaining from food or other things in order to give ourselves to fellowship or to prayer and fellowship with the Lord. Over the next few moments, we're going to be looking at spiritual disciplines and calling on the name of the Lord. Now, I think it's appropriate for me to just pause here and you say, why are you keep doing this Daniel fast every year? Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Can I tell you what the Lord has done? Even back in 2020, I remember we went through, all of us went through that terrible season, don't even like talking about it, but I can actually see the tapestry of God. The goodness of God, even in that tough situation. Uh, in January, when we did the Daniel fast, it was kind of our, our first time getting out there as a church and kind of doing it. I remember he was, Pastor John was calling us to this time of praying and fasting. In March, we didn't know that the entire nation was going to be shut down. But it was before the pandemic, coming out of the fast, where God spoke to our pastor's heart about a message really entitled, March On. And God was preparing us to raise up an army for the glory of God that we had to march on and move forward into what God was calling us to do. Although the nation seemed like it stopped, God keeps on moving. In that fall, fall of 2020, God transitioned us. And you remember we were under like this tent. We had the biggest tent in South Jersey. We had no clue what we were doing, but we felt God was telling us it's time to get the people together. And we focused on the promises of God. That God will never leave us. That God's going to pour out his spirit upon all people. And it, it encouraged us in that season. That came out of a fast. That February of 2021, a year later, we didn't know what was coming down the pipe. Things seemed to be opening up a little bit. And God whispered once again to our leader's heart, to our leadership, and our church. And he said, hey, one church isn't good enough. I want you to spread your ministry footprint into the inner cities called Valesburg Assembly of God. And God now, literally, through COVID, God saved a church in the inner city of Newark, New Jersey, from closing its doors. That church is not just going to come back. It's going to be better than ever before because God is in it. That came out of the fast. Isn't God good? So praying and fasting, the results will be beautiful and marvelous as we go through it together. You're going to experience major breakthrough during this time. If you and I are going to develop some spiritual muscles, your faith is going to be tested. As we're reading through the Bible in a year, you'll hear me talk about it and refer to it often. But I learned about it yesterday, a guy by the name of Abraham. And things were going well for Abraham. And the Bible says that sometime later, God 
tested Abraham. I don't want you to focus on the test that you're going to go through, but what I want you to focus on is the goodness of God that no matter what test comes your way, God is going to perfect your faith so that you can be stronger for the goodness and glory of God. Here's one way your faith is going to grow. That God is calling us, number one, to be people of prayer. That's just what we do. Prayer, we pray, we don't complain. It's too easy to complain. It should be hard to complain, but easy to pray. When you're praying and calling on the name of the Lord, listen to me, to the goodness of God and the faithfulness of his, his church, God will always come through. Prayer helps us to exercise faith in order for your faith to grow. On this spiritual journey for the next 21 days, God is wanting to develop our faith. Your faith, in order for it to grow, needs pressure and resistance. There's going to come a time when you get discouraged, but God has called us to a successful spiritual journey. Even from the Old Testament in the book of Joel, prophet Joel, where God prophesied that he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. This Joel in chapter 1 verse 14 says this. He called the people to come together. Whenever your pastor or spiritual leader senses in his heart that we need to come together, it's always for a bigger purpose that's bigger than you. God is calling us together so that we can grow together strong. He could do more through us by one than what he, God could do more through many than what he could do by one. You say, why would God do that? Listen to what he says. He says, declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land to the house of the Lord your God. Here's what he's going to do. He said, and cry out to the Lord. On top of just fasting, although fasting is wonderful, but fasting and prayer go together. So we're taking a week starting Monday. You heard Pastor John say this. Why? On every night this week, there's going to be a different emphasis, and I want to look at that in advance. Different emphasis on each night. Monday, we're declaring this a night of signs and wonders. We're not just saying signs and wonders. We're not just believing for signs and wonders. We're relying on God for signs and wonders for his glory and his honor. Tuesday night, we're going to wait on the Lord for spirit baptism. It's amazing what happens when you fast and pray. God begins to se separate some things in our hearts and our lives. And he begins to speak to us about setting just not our calling aside, but individuals aside. You're going you're gonna to hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit as we wait on him. But I believe that God wants to pour out his spirit on the next generation. I believe that with all of my heart. As Abraham was going to sacrifice his son Isaac on the Mount Moriah, you guys, if you don't remember the story, on Mount Moriah, God said, I want you to sacrifice your one and only son. And he didn't, he, you know, he had to tell his wife not about the sacrifice. He said, me and the boy, we're going to go to worship. And after we worship, we're going to come back. But he had to allow Isaac to feel his prayers. Isaac wasn't a kid that was in a, a, you know, a little stable, a little manger. No, no. And he was a teenager. And notice how Abraham said, Abraham, I, I, Isaac, I want you to see what God does. It's not just to see what God does in my life, but I believe God wants to show your teenagers the move of God. So we must allow God to then cultivate both of our faith for his glory. On Wednesday night, I'm excited for Wednesday. It's united prayer. We are going to lay hands on your children appropriately. We're going to anoint them with oil appropriately. Why? Because I believe that God wants to set your children apart. I don't know if you've been sensing or seeing the last couple of weeks here as we had services in the sanctuary. Pastor John, I don't even think you realize what you said under the unction of the Holy Spirit. But you prophesied over our children. We ought to prophesy over our children. Get them away from the lies of this world, but let's see God raise them up. But we need to pray and call on the name of the Lord. And then on Thursday, it's going to be spiritual breakthrough. Prayer helps us to develop our capacity, here it is, of patience. We're not people who pray when it's convenient. 
we are people that pray because it's essential. Notice what Jesus himself says about prayer. In Mark chapter 11, verse 17, as Jesus don't just, he didn't just call his disciples. He's instructing his disciples. The disciples saw Jesus work amazing miracles, and they tried to kind of drive out a demon. And watch what Jesus said, because the father complained that he went to his disciples and they couldn't drive it out. Jesus said this, is it not written that my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? God uses prayer to not just build our faith, but God also uses prayer to unify the body of Christ. Our world is so split, so divided, but God said, I don't operate like the world. I can operate in the world, but I'm calling my church to pray and call on the name of the Lord. As an example, I don't know if you've seen the news this past week, but something that really captivated the world, got the attention of us, was a gentleman, a football player by the name of Damar Hamlin. And uh, if you not kind of caught up on this, you can show that picture there. There were players from both opponents, both teams, uh, that kind of came together to pray. You say, why? What was happening? This gentleman, after hitting another gentleman and tackling him, no one knew it, but he went into cardiac arrest. They had to perform CPR for nine minutes on the field. I never heard a stadium quiet. As they took him out and took him off, typically players put up a thumbs up that they're all right, but there was no response. The thing that was happening, it was real time. And I love what happens in real time because most of the time, nobody knows what to do. And so they're trying to figure it out. I mean, we're live. They're like, are the players going to go back? What's going to happen? No one knew. Everybody came up with their opinion and this and that, and no one heard. And then a day later or that same night, I kept hearing the same theme over and over again, prayer, 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 pray, pray, pray. Before that, it's usually, hey, keep them in your thoughts. Keep them in your thoughts. Hey, hey, when, when, you, when you go to bed, think about Damar. All over television, all over sportscasters, literally praying. I love what someone said. They said, for those who believe and say that God in prayer does not belong in the NFL, tonight you are in the minority. This incident pulled opposing teams who were just trying to destroy one another, now kneeling together hand in hand, shoulder and shoulder. They got in contact with the doctors because no one knew what was going on. By the way, he's doing pretty well. He's kind of FaceTimed with the team and threw a thumbs up. He it's really remarkable, but hours before the, after this took place, the doctor said of this injury and what they encountered, and I quote, was unprecedented, but then they followed up with the words unprecedented days later to this is a remarkable recovery. That just doesn't happen. Let me put God where he belongs. In unprecedented times, we need an unprecedented God that moves on behalf of his people. Listen. The people of God, we don't pray when it becomes cool and accepted. That's what we do. We pray and God moves. Nothing can be accomplished without the power of prayer. Doug Clay, our general superintendent of the Assemblies of God, in preparation of this week in prayer, he said this, and I love it. We will never see awakening in our churches or change in our culture without fervent prayer. Jesus told his disciples, after they couldn't drive out demons, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. There are some things that are happening in your life right now, God's waiting for you to pray about it. There are some things that cannot be moved with lotion. They can only be moved by the spirit of Jesus. God, when you call on his name, all of heaven moves on our behalf. I can only imagine. There are situations that have took place in my life. 
Can I get saved? I'm loving Jesus. Jesus is loving me. I mean, it's awesome. I'm going, I'm going to church, learning how to get in the habit and routine of coming to church. I kind of come into church. I see hands being lifted up. I'm like, what is that all about? But I, I don't know about you. You, you, you never di discover wrestling in prayer when you need God to move. And I remember my, my mom uh, at the time, she was like kind of in her 40s, and she was like, you know what? I want to have more kids. I'm like, okay. What am I going to do? I'm going to stop her. So she ended up having more kids. She had twins after me. There's a 19-year difference between us. It's unbelievable. Still shocking me to this very moment. <laughs> but mom, you know, she had the twins. I'm like, well, praise God. Look, look, you know, look, look, Elizabeth in her old age is going to have children. You know, not really. But, you know, wow, mom, this is great. She's like, you know what, I'm going to have another one. I'm like, wow, mom, you may want to kind of slow down. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. She ended up having another one. And my mom's life was on the line. I got saved not too, not, not too long uh, before this, but my, my, my mom coded. She was done. She was done and she wasn't saved. I was the only one in my family at that time that was saved. I learned how to call on the name of the Lord. And I remember God used that season. Listen to me. Look, he tested my faith. Yes, in that season. But let me tell you something. No matter what the results were, I knew in that moment there's only one God that can change situations. And he did for the glory of God. <laughs> Fasting. Fasting is a unique dynamic and a power that brings to your prayers that the enemy cannot stop. F.B. Myers said the great tragedy of life is not unanswered prayers but unoffered prayers. What are some things that God is calling us to that we have not yet asked for? Secondly, if we're going to develop spiritual discipline, spiritual muscles, in order for our faith to grow, we must not only be people of prayer, but we must be people of the word, not the world. People of the word. During this next 21 days, ask God to increase your appetite for the word of God. Listen to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, talking against the enemy. Do you know there's an enemy waging against your soul? There's an enemy waging war against your mind. When you wake up and you're like, what am I feeling? There is so much that happens in the spirit realm that we can't even begin to fathom. Watch how Jesus understood his opposition, but how he overcame it all. Bible says in Matthew 4, 4, Jesus said this, it is written... Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. It's still the word of God that brings me joy and peace. It is still the word of God that, that touches my soul. It is still the word of God that never passes away. It is still the word of God when I hear it, it builds my faith. It is still the word of God that helps me in my season of weariness. It is still the word of God that ministers to me when I'm feeling lonely. It is still the word of God that speaks to me even when I feel like giving up. The word of God is still speaks, is still alive, is still active, is still satisfies, it still heals. Come on, somebody. I love the word. Oh, I love the word. Notice how Jesus uses the word in the face of opposition. So for these next 21 days, I'm calling you to be spiritual soldiers. It's time to arm up with the armor of God. Matthew chapter 4, watch what Jesus says in verse 5. Now listen, when we get to verse 7 and verse 10, it's either going to say it is written or it is also written. When we get to when Jesus says it is also written, and when it is written, I want you to repeat it after me. We're going to declare that together, all right? Now notice, Satan also knows the word. So we're not going to say it together when he says it, only when Jesus says it, cool? So I need your help, so clear your throats. Mm, so good. Verse 5, then the devil took him to the holy city. Now notice the, the strategic plan of the enemy. Watch what he does. If he tempted Jesus, he'll tempt you. It said, and he took him to the highest point of the temple. If, if Jesus knew he was the son of God, 
But if you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. He said, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Verse 7, here we go. Jesus answered him, it is also now, you can't say it like you're just real cool and, you know, it is also written. It's no, it is also written. No, 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 no. Like, like this is Jesus. He's like, are you kidding me? And we're going to say this together. It is also written. You ready? Nice and kind of like, mm, like he's coming at you. You're like, no, you don't come at, you know, it is also written. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Devil, it is also written. Like authority, you know what I mean? All right, you ready? One. Two, three. It is also. Boom. Dude, that was awesome, bro. You like, you ready to go. Are you kidding me? Flex on him a little bit. Do a little flex. Oh, my goodness. He said, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Now, Come out. We know that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The Bible says nothing was made without Him. Jesus already knew it was beautiful because He was with the Father when the Father said it is good. Now, watch this same. I was going to call him an idiot. That would have been nice. Watch this same. He takes him up and He goes, I'm going to show you what you made. Isn't it nice? He's like, oh, my goodness. He says, in this, I will give you. How can you give it to a person that already owns it? It's already his. He says, all this I will give you. Watch what is the enemy after. Is worship. If you bow down and worship me, Jesus said to him, I wish I was there in that moment. You might have tricked the first Adam, but you ain't tricking the second Adam. He said, away from me, Satan. See the exclamation mark? That was the only thing I learned right in English. It says, when you see that mark, you lift up your voice. Here it is. Away from me, Satan. Away from me, Satan. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Since the very beginning, the enemy has been feeding us lies. As followers of Jesus, we must be people of the word. We must know what it is written. We must be what I'm calling it is written people. practice, personally spending time with God. We want to help you on this spiritual journey as a church. We're going to take you through, and you can find it right on our website, on our app here, but you can put up that slide. I love this thing. I, 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 Pastor John, well, you've probably been doing it longer because you were saved longer than me. But when I first got saved, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to worship. I didn't know how to fast. I didn't know how to get into the word. I knew how to feed the flesh, but I didn't know how to feed the spirit. And so I followed Pastor John, and we used to have these little calendars, remember, that we used to give out in church. Now everything's digital. Give me old school. I want to check it off. But you kind of make it through every single day. Listen to me. You probably will not remember the meal you ate last week. But you needed it in that moment. The word of God is the same way. It's feeding your soul daily. We need the word of God. I encourage you. Let the word of God fill your heart, 
your mind, your soul. Let it fill your home, your marriage, your relationship. It is the authoritative word of God. We should sing about the word, feed off the word, watch the word, listen to the word, do the word. Allow God to allow you to tune in to the voice of the spirit. You need the word of God. God, what are you saying to me? Here's why. Because the world and everything around you, he wants your attention. And he wants you to dance to his music. But the spirit of God, allow the spirit of God to control the playlist of your thoughts. The spirit of God will do it. The word of God, let it fill your home, your workplace, our church, and even in your activity. It's his word. And thirdly. Here's a third way we can exercise our faith. We must be people of the Spirit. All throughout the book of Revelation, we hear the Spirit of God saying, if you hear these words of mine, God's Spirit is speaking clearly, but we must align ourselves up with him. We, I, get it, I, get what, I get what the world is saying, but do we know what God is saying? We must be people of the Spirit. Listen, being a person of prayer is great. Being a person of the Word, awesome. But nothing happens without the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but it's only by the Spirit of God that addictions are, set, are, are broken. It's only by the Spirit of God that darkness is, is, has to flee. It's by His Spirit. Some of you are believing God for great things for your family. I'm telling you, yes, the word, yes, prayer. But, oh, we need the power of the Spirit. Over the next 21 days, I encourage you. You're like, how can I do this? Here's what I'm telling you right now. I know this because it happens to me. The enemy's probably kind of whispering to you right now, oh, do it next year. You know what? You're so busy. You don't have time. No. I, I got a better way. Just complain all day. We'll, we'll take care of you. The enemy loves when we complain. He loves when we get into our little pity parties. He brings the balloons. He's like, this is great. But oh, the people of God, those who say, God, I'm tuning into the spirit of God. Can you imagine what God has in store for us. One of the things that helped me to grow in my walk with God, it's really simple. Yes, the word. Yes, prayer and coming to church. Yeah, all those are great. But you know what took my walk with God to a whole nother level? I surrounded myself with like-minded people. People that were ahead of me. So, like, for example, I get saved, and I literally get dropped off on the steps of a church. My mom didn't go to church. My dad didn't go to church. Not yet. My girlfriend over there, Puerto Rican mama, she didn't go to church. That was one of my biggest prayers. Lord, save her. Save her so I can keep her. Because my pastor said, if you ain't saved, we can't date. I'm dead serious. I said, so, so you got to get saved. She got saved, gave her heart to Jesus. I was celebrating. God kind of did some things. But one of the things I remember that oftentimes plays in my mind is when I told you I, I stayed close to Pastor John, I got on his nerves. Like, I remember, here's like a few of our rides. He would come to our basketball games or whatever. He had a, he had a Ford Taurus that was just terrible. The thing, when you went over 60 miles per hour, remember that the windshield would go. I'm so glad God blessed him. Come on, he did, come on. But I remember him on Saturdays cleaning up the church. I would kind of sneak over there. He would be like putting some tying in, some loose ends on his message, and I would sense in my heart and my spirit that he needed a break. So I would say, hey, would you like to come downstairs? We had a gym. You want to like to lose at a game of horse real quick? I would, because I, I just needed to be around like-minded people, you know what I'm saying? 
Now watch how he prayed and called on the name of the Lord. And watch how he read his Bible, how he treated his wife and raising kids. And just all those. I just stayed close. Kind of annoying, but I stayed close. Because I wanted to catch everything that God had for me. You say, why are we calling you to this time of prayer, this time of fasting? Stay close to Jesus. He wants you to catch what he has for you. But if we're not in position, I want all that God has for me. I don't want to miss what God has. Watch what it says. I love it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, listen to the word of God. Paul a mighty man of God, but he was a major sinner, just like me. Writing to a really, a church that was terrible. This church in Corinth were terrible. They needed four letters from the Apostle Paul. Things they were doing was out of whack. But he knew if God's spirit begins to move, it can transform people's lives. He said this to remind him. He says, do you not know that in the race all the runners run? but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games, physical, goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But for the Christian, the believer, the follower of Jesus, the spirit-filled believer, but we do it that we will get a crown that will last, not for a moment, forever it's going to be worth it therefore here's what he's saying I told you this so I can tell you this therefore I do not run like someone running aimlessly I don't fight like a boxer just beating the air like a shadow boxer he says no I strike a blow to my body and I make it a slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. In this season, we got to remain sharp, laser sharp. I'm talking God's got some great things for us. If God provided this, how much more, Lord? How much more are you calling us to do? Hear me. It's not just the pastors. Every person is responsible for this gospel. Every person. Can you imagine what God's going to do at Marlton and Valesburg? i got to preach this message again at Valesburg, our campus church, and I can't wait. God is doing stuff up and down the turnpike, up and down Garden State Parkway. Why? Because when we pray and fast and we call on the name of the Lord, we will lead this nation for the glory and honor of Jesus. Would you pray with me? Come on. Whether you're watching online or you're here, I sense God here. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we're committing today and these next 21 days for you to move in ways we cannot. And God, we're asking for you to download your plan, your purposes, your spirit into focus and into our lives. Lord, we commit ourselves to being people of the word people of prayer, people of the Spirit. Father, I pray that your people that are called by your name will be razor sharp for your glory. Father, I pray, God, that you will begin to speak, that you, we will hear the sound of heaven, that we will experience the activity of heaven, the angels of God rejoicing, people getting saved, filled with the Spirit, being healed at this altar, Father, set free the drug addict. Set him free, Jesus. Set him free, Jesus. 
I pray for every alcoholic bound by the Spirit. I pray in Jesus' name that, God, that you would give them a new mind and a new heart. Father, I pray, God, that you would, you would unwrap darkness from around people's lives and that you would clothe them in light. Jesus, make people over. Let marriages get stronger. I pray for wayward sons and wayward daughters to come back home again. I pray, God, for the spirit of obedience and the anointing that comes from you. God, enter the human heart once again. Lord, let this altar be filled with people experiencing a fresh outpouring from heaven. God, we dedicate this week to you. If I can have your attention for just a moment. We did this during the first service. I feel that in our congregation, you're growing stronger. I feel and sense in the spirit of God that you are hungry for the things of God. Our job as leaders are simple. We're like John the Baptist that prepares the way. Come see a man, his name is Jesus. He's gonna pour out his spirit upon us. Here's what we're gonna do. There were gonna come a moment, you heard Pastor John say, where we would dedicate the sanctuary. But I think it's important that we give God this week and this next 21 days to do some amazing things in our lives. I believe and I'm convinced that it will happen through the altar. And like the first service, here's what I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask that we start this year off right. Maybe you're here with your mom or dad, maybe you're here, husband and wife, maybe you're here alone. Maybe you're here with grandma or grandpa. You're here. I'm gonna ask us if we can stand at this time. In just a moment, we're gonna come and we're gonna come to this altar as a body of Christ together saying, God, in anticipation for what you're going to do in 2023, can we come and place our feet near this altar? Let's press in. Come on. Every person, come on. And let's begin to lift up our hands before the Lord. Jesus, have your way. Come on, new miracles. Let's press in. Let's press in. Let's press in. Come on. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. As you're coming to this altar, man, we want to make room. Come on, let people slide in behind you. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. I believe that God is wanting to do something in the Spirit. Something in the spirit, something in the spirit. Give me one second, Will. Give me one second. I don't know why, but I sense an urgency in my spirit for this service. An urgency. As you begin to walk and transition around this altar, God is reminding me in my heart. He says that he is the spirit of truth. And there are some things that are locking onto your faith that's not good. And it's creating in you what the Bible calls a double mind. It's creating doubt and fear and discouragement, the whole thing. And what the enemy does that we don't talk enough about is that he'll actually trick you to thinking that's God. And it's not. We must become it is written people. It is written allows my mind, my spirit, to align to the truth of God's word. Then my feelings latch on to my faith. Without it, your feelings are looking to grab onto something. Let me just be honest with you. It's so easy to grab on to the flesh. You don't have to do anything, just wake up. But those who have the discipline to align and to attach themselves to what God is doing, let me tell you what's going to happen. He says this, it is written, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom.
there's freedom, there's liberty. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It is written, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. It is written, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table. In other words, God is not afraid of stepping into your life and preparing things in advance that you don't see now. It is written. Here's what I just strongly believe. As we lift up our hands to God, the spirit of depression will fall off. That spirit of anxiety will fall off. It's a spirit, man. And we need God's spirit to move. We need joy. We need his peace. We need his kindness. We, that all come. Bible says every good and perfect gift comes up down from the Father. So come on, Marlton, as we sing this chorus. Let's lift up our hands to God and let the joy of the Lord fill you up. Come on. Come on, come on. We can do it. We can do it. and a vision that just came through my thoughts and my spirit. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, they placed him in a tomb and the reports were getting out so they said, make sure you seal that tomb. Don't only just seal it, put the guards in front because we heard a report. But a few days later, he's going to come back. 
My God is not afraid of two guards or seal around a, a stone. He sealed it up. Scripture gives us a little indication about what took place within those three days. We understand that he had to get the keys of death, hell, and darkness. He had to come with the enemy face to face. But I can only imagine the spirit realm saying, we got him. We got him. Hell was reigning that day. Darkness was reigning that day. But I can only imagine when night number one went away. Night number two went away. And they said, is he still there? No, oh, the devil and the angels said, he's still there. But then, third day came. And his body got warm. Death had to let him go. No longer our mastery. I sense that in my spirit. Why pray and fast? There are some things that have to let go. There are some things that just have to be broken. I am praying, declaring, maybe even prophesying this. That we're going to walk in newness of life that we're going to be full of the Holy Spirit, that we're going to say, God, let me loose so I can do what you call me to do. Don't miss what God has for you. This is going to be a better day. It's going to be a good day. God bless you, Pastor John. What a great word. So that kicks us off. We start the Daniel Fast today. If you didn't think about it, say, I want to jump on. Maybe you've got something going on the rest of the day. Jump on tomorrow. But tomorrow night, and Pastor Mel's going to be leading us this week. There's going to be some little bit of worship, a little bit of teaching. Let me just say this, what to expect. If you get here between 6.30 and 7 tomorrow, we'll just be kind of praying. But at 7, we're going to give all the worship people off. We're going to have some video on the screen. We're just going to worship and get right into praying for one hour. We'll do that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Try to make Thursday. You're only coming Thursday? Every day? Are you, come, are you coming tomorrow? Every day, right there. I just heard Thursday. I don't know what you meant by that. All right, every day, right? All right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we're just going to get in. We're going to pray. And we'll get you out. I promise we'll get you out at 8 o'clock. Right, Pastor Jamel? 8 o'clock. Let's pray God's blessing. Let's believe God for breakthroughs. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night.